Okay. Uh, good evening, guys. Yeah, uh, I'm Isaac. Uh, some of you might have known me, like the guys over there at the, at, at the back. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I was uh, inspired to do this uh, session because uh, in one of the group posting, someone posted like, how do I do like an animation whereby the thing is being masked and all that. There were a few uh, options. Uh, there were a few answers on the group posting but I thought maybe I should share with you guys uh, this type of uh, solution that I have been doing uh, all this time so the solution that I adopted was uh, to use animation with Bezier uh, Path so seems like uh, a lot of beginners do not know what is Bezier Path because uh, frankly speaking even when I were to do research on Bezier Path online there's not many tutorials on Bezier Path so without further ado let me just show you a demo okay so from here right as you can see the animations come in from left right and then the thing goes in like that with the flare going in the center so if I were to show on the bigger screen Yeah, so the animation is going to be like that. Yeah, so uh, one of the solution is you know you can just do a short movie file and then like just press the button and then the animation goes in. But what if the client wants to do something like I want to switch the pictures around, like the cutting, you see? Yeah, you can't be you know having the guy to do two movie files for such a thing. So what I did was we use Perseo Path. So in my uh, In my course, okay. So first thing first, what I will do is I will get two image files. So I have this uh, two image. This is the skull people, and then uh, iron hero, which is behind it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether this one is top or is at the back or is at the front. Okay, I'm just going to set this as the top image and the. This cow people which is in front is going to be the bottom image. So first thing first, what I did was to draw the path. So to draw the path for that type of shape, for this type of shape, I will need to draw it using Bezier path. So to draw that, I first initialize the top, uh, the Bezier path, followed by uh, the first. The thing to do is to move to point zero, which is this point. So once I move to that point, I add the line to point to this point, then to this point, to this point, and back to this point. So that will be the top line, the left side line, the uh, bottom planted line, and followed by the right line. And then after that, I will do a close path. Okay, this one is actually optional. If I don't do this, it will also still close the path. So it will just be like this, and the close path will close, will draw a straight line to the top. But uh, for me, I always practice. I always want to be safe, so I always add the line before I close the path. So after doing that, I will mask that layer. So the CA shape mask layer. I will create the shape layer followed by setting the path of the mask layer to what I have drawn here so once I have drawn, uh, set the path to the mask layer I set my image layer to follow the mask so uh, for this to happen uh, we have to include quad score library if we do not include the quad score library we will not be able to play around with the layer so example let's just
So as you can see, the picture is now being cut to just show this uh, part of the image only. Yeah. So besides this, I can do any type of pattern as long as I set it inside my uh, path. So after that, I continue on with uh, doing the bottom path. So again, I just move to, uh, instead of moving to the top, I move. I start from the bottom here. Followed by moving to this point, to this point, to this point, and to this point. Yeah. And then after that, I just set the mask to follow that path. Okay, and let me just unhide that. Yeah, there we go. So I only show the uh, part of the image that I want for the top and for the one that I want at the bottom. Yeah. So I uh, just put this one side. Okay. So uh, this one is optional. I just put it just to give the effect of like the thing banging into each other. Yeah. Okay, maybe I just uh just comment this out first. Okay. So for the uh that is the how to mask the image. And you can get any type of image that you want. You can do a star or sometimes uh one application that I did for Vodka drawing app was that. I mask the layer of the canvas so only when the person go over the canvas the line will be drawn but if the person were to uh, swipe the hand outside the canvas nothing will be drawn yeah so you can also use this uh, technique for uh, masking canvas for drawing <coughs> so uh, after doing that the third type uh, the other type of animation is to animate like a flare to follow a certain path so it, let's say you have a zigzag line you want the dot to follow that zigzag line you can do that by using Bezier path as well so uh, for this uh, demonstration I'm going to show you how to create a circle path and then the flare will follow that circle path yeah. so here I'm going to just uncomment this and uncomment this So here, uh, restart position is going to be at view will appear. Yeah, this is going to just uh, push the image to the side. And uh, yeah, I uh, duplicate that uh, whatever codes here. So actually, these codes can all be commented out. But uh, for this demonstration, I just leave it there for uh, for you guys. Yeah. <coughs> So here, so this is going to just uh, this is just some formula that I do to make it like shift uh, alternatively from left to right, and then if I press the button again, it will be from right to left. Yeah. <coughs> then uh, restart animation. So this thing is just going to go in with the sound being played. So it's just just sliding to the center. So that is simple enough uh, for people who have played with animation. Yeah, this is just from the sides going in. Okay, so and then the animate button is just a uh, expansion to the minimization to the normal size of the button. Yeah, so this one is uh, pretty straightforward. The animations. Uh, okay, so here is where I animate the flare. After the button appears, then I animate the circle flare. So what happened is that. Uh, okay, first thing first, I set the position to point zero. 
but actually this one can be at any point you want it doesn't matter so after that I'm going to do the bezier path I'm going to get that flare to follow this certain path so first thing first I did was I create the circle path so to do that I use the path with arc center so self.view.center followed by a radius of 250 pixels and then start angle I start at uh, 90 degrees so will be at the top if I'm going to start at zero it's going to be start from the right side of the circle so I started at 90 degrees and then I want to end it at 90 degrees again but the problem with this code is that if you were to put a uh, 90 degrees and then followed by the end angle 90 degrees it will not move at all because it thinks that you are just uh, you just want to remain there so if let's say I would do oops So you see, it will not move or it will not even show up. So to avoid that from happening, I'm just going to minus one degrees off from the total circle. Yeah, and I want it to move it clockwise. That's why I get the flare to move in a clockwise position. If I don't put it as clockwise, it will move the other way around. Um, no, maybe not because it will only move like one degrees. Yeah, that's it. So I will need to play around with the start angle and the end angle again. Yeah. So maybe I can do something like just take away this minus to eh the plus to a minus. And we should be seeing it moving in a counterclockwise position. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So this Persia path, I just create the circle path and after that I'm going to use the keyframe animation this keyframe animation is just uh, one step lower than the UI view animation yeah, so with this uh, keyframe animation I just want to animate the position of the layer there are a lot there are other key paths that can be animated uh, I'm not sure if we can see her or not Okay, um, where did I saw that thing? Yeah, there's, there's a few key puff that is, uh, you should be able <coughs> to mention this stuff. Okay, I'm not sure uh, which part of the documentation I saw it. Yeah, so uh, there you can animate the position, the size, the transform, the center. Yeah, so these are some of the key puff that you are able to animate. Uh, so after that, it's just setting the animation duration Then the calculation mode, I set it to paste There's a few <coughs> other uh, calculation mode as well Like linear, discrete, cubic and cubic paste uh, Honestly speaking, cubic and cubic paste, I'm not so sure at all uh, For this time round uh, Linear is just going to make it The speed is going to be uniform throughout Paste it's a little bit, I don't know, but I, I prefer paste to linear uh, in my experience. Then discrete, I'm not so sure as well. Yeah. So, <coughs> remove on completion is uh, just to remove the <coughs> animation after the animation has been fully played. But uh, for this case, whether we put no or yes, the thing is going to be uh, deallocated once the function is uh, being played. So uh, to do, if you want it to remain, you most probably have to set 
the global <coughs> property, global variable, yeah. Is it global variable? <laughs> Public variable, yeah. Yeah, so the field mode, there's a few field mode as well. And then, uh, so this is the thing that will, is the most important. The path, will, the path of their animation is going to follow the Bezier path. Yeah. So if let's say, uh, I do not want circle, I want it to follow the, oops. I want it to follow the top path. So what I can do is, just going to copy this. Okay, paste it. Uh, so I just want it to follow the top path. What I will do is the curve path. I'm going to change the top path, and I'm going to run it. Oh, so the image. Image job is not good. What is it? I think the image stop is not here. So the image stop, uh, let me see. Easy. Use of. Is it first? Yeah, this reverse is the local variable in the previous function. If we. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, I see. Uh, Let's just bring it to this method. Hmm. Wait, hold on, let me just see two minus. I'll declare it again. Okay, I'll just put this as. <coughs> okay. So, with that thing, once this path is being played. Yeah, it follows that path. Okay, now I don't know why it's going like that, but two, two third times Yeah, but I guess yeah, you can set the path as anything, and the uh, flare will follow that path. Yeah. So again, like uh, for example, you have like a math function, like a sine function, and you want the flare to so-called follow that sine graph. You can also set the Bezier path to a sign graph and then uh, set the flare, the image flare, the layer to hey, what's that? Oh, add the animation to the image flare layer and the flare will follow a sign function uh, graph. Yeah. So uh, with this circle path, yeah. This is uh, a very quick and dirty way of uh, me trying to show you guys how to do like a loading animation where the thing goes in one round yeah because there a few uh, people asking in the iOS group about like how to do the you know loading animation in a circle so to do that we can uh, use the Bezier path instead of uh, trying to calculate the I think there was an answer saying that we can calculate the radius follow the radius and all that but I think uh, yeah, that's one answer, but uh, for me, my answer is going to be this is because it's uh, faster than you know calculating the total distance, the circumference of the circle, and all that. Yeah, <coughs> so Yeah, so that's, I guess that's about it. So let me just replay this thing here. Should be playing the correct thing again. Where's my son? Oh, okay. There we go. Huh? There's error again. Where is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I forgot to turn it close. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah. Go and move left, right, right, left. That's about it. Yeah. So, uh, I hope to see more apps that you know during the when during the launch screen. 
gonna be something like this, you know. The thing animates, it's gonna be so cool. Yeah. Instead of a uh, very flat design, you know, popping up. So okay, that's what. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, any questions about the animations? Keep free. Was it Paul? Well, okay, I guess you guys must be <laughs> good too. <laughs> um, yeah, just one comment maybe. Okay. Uh, because for you, I can see a path, right? You mm -hmm. have to go from point to point and you specify uh, whether it's a line or a curve. So if it's a very complicated path, right, it can be very hard for you to visualize. So usually for me, I just uh, write it on uh, paper first. But I know there are some professionals where if they have a bigger budget, right, they can get a third party app where they can actually draw the path on that app and then the app will generate the code to, uh, for you to get the path. Yeah, I think there's one such uh, yeah. app on Pink the app store right now. Yeah, Pink Code is one of it. Yeah. It's quite a bit. I haven't yeah. tried it before yet, but I feel it might be quite useful. Well, it's very complicated. I think, I think I saw, yeah. I'll also just remember that if you're using Swift, you can use Playgrounds and you can see how the path is done. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't try it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't shifted on to Swift yet. <laughs> and uh, before I found out about UI Bezier Path, right, I was actually using CG Path. It's actually the same thing. Oh, yeah, it's uh, the same. Bezier Path is kind of like the wrapper class for CG Path, and it's yeah. way easier to use. Yeah. There's, there, there are a few stuff whereby they are actually wrapper class of the core graphic library. Yeah. yeah. So CG uh, Path is one of them. Uh, CG Image is also another one of them. Yeah. If you know about CG image, you can do all those like filters and everything, right? Yeah, which is, is actually cool too. Yeah, like for, you know, Instagram where they have the filters of the images. Yeah, that one is just using the core image library. You can have all that filters in the app. Yeah, it's not that difficult to, to okay, it, it is quite difficult, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anymore? I, I'm, I'm very sure the app can be optimized to the codes, the lines can be much better instead of like, you know, putting it into blocks uh, in a stag staggering manner. Uh, so I'm very sure we can uh, use the UI, eh, no, no, the CA animation class to make it neater. Yeah, but uh, this was a quick demo, so yeah. Ah uh, yeah. If you use uh, if you are familiar with Sprite Kit, right, they have this SK action where you kind of use it to move your uh, objects, or they call it nodes around the screen. So uh, they have some uh, simple function for you to move in a straight line and so on. But if you want more advanced movement, some kind of curve and so on, the path is the one that we usually go. Uh, for SK action, they usually just take in CG path. But the best thing about UI Bezier path is that after you make the Bezier path, right? There's a, a CG path property that you can use so that it will just create a CG path for you out of the UI Bezier path. So uh, I use this quite a lot and I think it's a very useful yeah. if you are into games. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing this for, for one of the game development for when I was in Strike Soft. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's how I find out about Bezier path. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you um, can't really input a Sorry, uh, uh, you can't really input a function for the path though. You have to kind of uh, specify the point and then some control points. So yeah. It can be quite troublesome. Yeah, that's, that's the <laughs> troublesome part about yeah, using this thing. Yeah. But you know, uh, yeah, you can use Sprite Kit and all that, but you know, uh, for me, sometimes I just want to use another library for just that small functions, more stuff that I want to do. So I just code it in myself yeah, instead of using another third party library. I think Sprite Kit, uh, if you want to go a bit overdrive, Unity 3D. Yeah. But yeah, the libraries are so huge for such a small project, is I would rather just code it in myself and make it lightweight as possible. Yeah. <coughs> so, any more questions? Any more comments? I think there's a very uh, recently someone just came up with an animation 
uh, app as well on the app store but I forgot what it's called I think it's Brazil control or something I forgot what it's called maybe I'll just search it later and I put it out on the iOS group later on yeah so what that uh, app does is that you just key in the type of animations you want into the app and the app will generate the codes for you I haven't really tested it I haven't really tried it because it costs money so I don't want um, yeah, good as a <laughs> usually <laughs> chips case. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but if anybody who's like new or beginner, I think and, and they want to learn more about this stuff, I think they can use the app and they most probably can go up to speed, you know, uh, on learning the animations with Bazir Path and all that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. I think oh you guys uh, want to share your stuff? Okay, uh, anyway, uh, before before I move on, okay, uh, before I wrap it, things up, uh, General Assembly has reached Singapore. So General Assembly uh, has just contacted me, uh, one of the guys, Riley, uh, General Assembly. So what they do is they teach uh, programming to people in Singapore, actually all over the world, but they just uh, have an office situated in Singapore. So uh, I'm going to be teaching in one of the classes. <laughs> Riley contacted me and asked me whether I'll be interested in teaching the beginners class. So I'll be teaching on. Uh, oh, what's the date? Huh? Have a website, but I don't have have internet connection. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Let me just. Uh, just log in the Wi-Fi. Log in. The Oh, okay. What's the Wi Fi? You know, they don't show me. This one? Yeah. Password is Let me just take my email again. Ah, yeah, there we go. So, uh, this will be my first class, and I think that it's also going to be my only class because I'm going to hopefully I'm going to go off to the States in June. So, uh, yeah, if any, guy, any of you guys are interested in teaching part time during the Saturday, Sundays, or after working hours, you all can contact uh, General Assembly directly. Yeah, and uh, for this class, uh, yeah, it's going to take part in uh, 11 May, 6:30 to 8:30. So if you have any guys who are interested and know nothing about, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to ask. Um, is there like a direct contact? Uh, I can pass you the contact. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. No problem. Yeah, uh, the guy who's contacting me is uh, Carl Riley. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Uh, if you guys have heard of the pr Pragmatic Lab, uh, which was uh, a few years ago, right? Pragmatic. Yeah, good. The Pragmatic Lab, yeah. It, some of the guys in these companies also from the Pragmatic Lab. Yeah. Uh, so, they are doing something similar to the Pragmatic Lab, but uh, the only thing is that they do it part time and uh, the timing is more flexible. Yeah. The pragmatic lab is no more. No more. Okay. They have been taken over by yeah. a the China company. Yeah, right? the Taiwan company called Alpha Camp. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think they still. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I, I saw them. Uh, I saw the post from Sidwin. Yeah. yeah, time. Yeah. Okay, so that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah,